if at first you don't succeed, you're human. Transform your life because it's never too late. If you're a senior citizen, you're a little bit older, this is definitely for you. Are you younger? Are you, are you in your 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, beyond? This is for you too, because let's learn something. I have seen some posts from nomads, from my friends, talking about things in their life that they're still dealing with from way back there as children, and it has affected their life even to this day. Well, I'm gonna talk about this. I say transform your life because it's never too late. Let's say we're 60 years old. Let's say we're 70 years old. We feel so, oh, we're so experienced. We're old, we're older. You know, that is nothing in the scheme of things. That is no time at all. How can we know everything? Even by 60, in 60, 70 years, there's no way that we can learn everything that we need to learn about ourselves, about how the world works. I mean, I think at 60 and 70, things start falling into place. Oh yeah, I mean, we're starting to get it a little bit. But why are we still talking about our childhood trauma from way back there and we're still living our life under the guise of that, under the experience of that? So this is what I want to talk about today. So stay with me. It's going to be a really good discussion. Don't go anywhere. Look down and see if you're subscribed, okay? That will help. And if you want to go to minivanlead.com, if you want to give me a little gift, that, that is helpful too. If you want to do that, you don't have to. Um, but let's get started with this. I've got a lot to talk about. You know, it does take years to know who we are. It takes years to know how the world works. It takes years to know where our, where our skills are. What is our purpose in life? What are our talents? It takes years to know that sometimes. I mean, some people get it right off, but then they, there's still other things that they have to learn. So if you're younger, listen up because this is really gonna help you. We've all grown up with, as children, with bullies in our lives. I mean, I've been bullied a few times as a child. We've grown up with parents who have shamed us, who have made us feel guilty about things. And even if they didn't mean to make us feel guilty, a lot of times we took on things that went wrong. We took it upon ourselves because we were children and we feel like, well, it had to be my fault. I had to have some part in this problem and this, this complete um, dysfunction of certain families. We took this on in our hearts and we thought, well, somehow I am responsible for that. Even though we know in our mind that that is ludicrous. But in here in the subconscious mind, way deep, and in our hearts and in our spirits, we feel guilty. We, and we've carried this guilt throughout. Sometimes we don't even know that we've done it. But there is guilt and shame going on in our lives. And it has affected us. It affected the fact that we married the wrong people and then we became parents. And quite possibly, in most cases, we ended up shaming our children, not treating them with the proper love and respect that they really um, were due. Because now they're children and now they're going to end up feeling shame and guilt. And what happens? We're going to get older. We're going to watch them growing up. We're going to watch them with children. And we're going to go, aha, I see the problem. I see what went wrong back there. And guess what? Then the guilt really clicks in. What did I do to my children? Oh my gosh, what did I do to them? Raising children, we make a lot of mistakes. Just like our parents made the mistakes, their parents made the mistakes, and their parents, and it goes on and on. And then our children are our parents, and now they're making a lot of the same mistakes. So there's this guilt that keeps getting moving on and on and on through time. 
And now we're seeing now a lot of us, I'm not all, but not now a lot of us are senior citizens. And we think, oh, I know a lot of you that think I've got it all together. That's not me. Au contraire. I know it's a lot of you because I see some of your posts. Some, a lot of you are actually talking more about this that you realize and you all of a sudden it's going aha that aha moment wow i'm still thinking about this i'm still feeling guilty i'm still i i my friends i only um i i am uh i isolate myself i'm trying to think of it i isolate myself too much i'm distrusting of people I don't feel good about myself. I made the stupidest choices in partners. And, you know, in my love interest, I made all these dumb choices. And what's happening is what happened with our parents, what happened in the past, we're dragging, we're just dragging it into the future. So I want to talk about transforming your life and doing it right now, getting it done right now to think about these things and ponder these things. So thinking about this, where does this all leave us? Where does all of this guilt and shame, where has it gotten us? Well, it's gotten us riddled with guilt and guilt actually causes disease. It causes hormones. This is science. It causes hormones in our body that create disease. And then we start getting sick. So here's what I'm saying today. Transform your life. Say no to guilt. No more guilt. No more guilt, all of you out there. No more. And I'm going to talk at the very end, I'm going to talk about how some steps that we can take to get rid of it for good. Here's something I have noticed with this with our children that that would be generation x i think i don't know i get i get i don't know all the names right generation x when i was when i became an adult i mean there were things i had against my parents we all do but i rarely i only think maybe a couple times i asked them about things but i never went i never dumped on them i never wanted to bring them up i guess i was uncomfortable with it but I kind of felt bad for them because why would I want to bring this up? They're now senior citizens. Why would I want to confront this at this point? Well, now we have Generation X and some millennials. I have Generation X children and millennials. Well, they're this, that generation, those two, they're more apt to bring it up. Well, that's sometimes, it can be good, but I also think in my mind, I'm a senior citizen now. I gave my youth to my children and I, I raised them and now I'm older. Now I don't have children at home and now maybe I can go on and live my life in freedom. But if my children want to come to me and keep bringing the same things up, I don't think that's freedom at all. It makes me feel guilty it makes me feel ashamed, like, oh, wow. I mean, I was a good mother. We're all going to do things wrong. We just are. I mean, it's like being a, a, a parent because we are trying to survive as parents. And there really are no rule books. We learn from our parents, right? So they really, and we're trying to work. We're trying to live our lives. We're trying to be who we are. And we have these little ones that we need to guide. I've seen some perfect parents who seem perfect out there and kudos to them. I wasn't one of them. I really wasn't. And I'm going to guess that a lot of you weren't either. Why do I want to now that I'm not a parent? Why do I want to go on and feel more guilt? So anything that my children have ever, they don't come to me a lot, but whatever they have come to me, I apologize to them. And I said, I'm really sorry, which I know my parents never would have done. My mother would never would have done that. She never would have apologized. What she would have said is, I did the best I could. Let's move on. Okay. But I will apologize. But I'm not going to have it be brought up all the time. I want to go on and be guilt-free. I want to live my life shame-free. The trauma that you may have felt as a child, 
either through your parents, your neighbors, bullies, teachers, whatever. And there's a lot of bully teachers out there. I really got to say that a lot of bully teachers. What happened was, is it made you feel like you didn't fit in. It made you feel different than other people, right? Am I right on that? It just made you feel different. But guess what? We are different. We are all unique. And I really want you to get that in your head. Why would we want to be like everybody else? We're, there's nobody like you. You are one of a kind. You really are. We all have experiences. We all have different personalities. There is, there's, you're unique. There's only one person like you. And you're important in this world. So don't ever feel like if you don't fit, don't ever feel like you don't fit in. Actually, it's kind of good that you don't fit in sometimes. But when you were a child, it felt like you didn't fit in. Because seriously, who wants to be like everybody else? I don't. And especially as we get older, we don't want to be like everybody else. So when we feel guilty or shame, we want to punish ourselves, right? We might not do it. Mm, we might not do it consciously, but I think unconsciously we do. This comes through with doing drugs, alcohol abuse, smoking, killing ourselves with smoking, vaping. And a lot of us use food to punish ourselves. We eat too much and we eat too much of the wrong foods. We're trying to stuff everything down. And I am not going to go on the premise that you are saying, maybe right now saying, well, that's not me. I'm too old for that. I'm going to guess that this could relate to almost everybody. Everybody. No, I know that a lot of you have given up alcohol. You've given up cigarettes, vaping, and you're starting to get um, off. You know, mar I know that marijuana is legal almost everywhere, but it's still not good smoking. It's not good for your lungs. And why do you need to use it? Why do you need to relax that way? But... A lot of you are still using the food to make you feel better, to stuff it all down, to um, console yourself, yeah, to put yourself in a good, in the comfort zone. But in the end, it really is wrecking havoc with your health and your mind. So you feel bad and you do these things to punish yourself. Or you just don't feel like you can be happy. Or you feel like you don't trust anybody. Or you feel like you're kind of um, you're kind of a loner. And you feel, but here the key is, you feel like you're imperfect. Well, guess what? That's good. Because nobody's perfect. Not one person is perfect. Your friends aren't perfect. Your partner isn't perfect. And if you're trying to make everybody to be, if you're trying to make everybody out to be perfect, well, you want them to be perfect. I think that probably stems from the fact that you don't feel perfect and you're trying to put that on, project that onto everybody else. You're not perfect. Nobody is. So accept the fact that you're not perfect. Now, how can we eliminate this guilt and the shame that we feel that we've, we've carried this way too long? It, it's just, it, we've carried it. I, I, we need to drop it off and start living our life in joy. So how can we get rid of this? I want to tell you one major thing is to eliminate the negative talk inside of your head. Eliminate that. If you sense, you'd be surprised what you're saying to yourself and you don't even know that you're saying it. So one of the things is you're going to have to start being aware of the thoughts that are in your head, what you hold in your head, you're going to hold in your hand. If you're doing negative talk against yourself, that's horrible. I don't want you to ever do that to yourself again. There's enough other people that can do negative talk about you, but you need to do positive talk about yourself. I heard this one study and they asked this question, is it better to talk more positive or is it better to eliminate the negative talk? And guess what? Which do you think it would have been? It was eliminate the negative talk. You can keep talking positive all you want, but if you've got this going on over here, the negative, it's going to hurt you. So you need to eliminate that. When you catch yourself doing it, switch it. I've mentioned this many times. Switch it around. If you say, 
oh, I'm just so stupid or, oh, um, well, I don't know. I constantly keep doing this. Why do I do this? Turn it around and say, I'm, I'm, I'm very intelligent. I, I did this once, but you know, I won't, I'm not going to do it again. I don't do this all the time. Right now. I remember saying to myself this morning saying, Oh, I felt a little, I don't know this morning. I did feel this morning. I did feel a little weak and I caught myself saying it when I was walking around the park, I caught myself and I switched it. I said, I feel very strong. I feel very, I feel, I feel strong. I feel healthy. I feel good. And guess what? I, I kind of switched it around a little bit. So yeah, eliminate the negative talk. Number two, remind yourself and write it down on a piece of paper. Remind yourself and write it down all the things that you're good at, all the things that you can do, that you've learned to do, your skills. What skills do you have? Write down all the little accomplishments that you've done. I have it written down in my nomad vision board. <laughs> this is my vision board. I've written um, affirmations onto cards. And I say these, I haven't been doing it recently, but I will start doing it. But one of them is, uh, there's a list. It says, I have already done, and then it lists all these things. So even the mi most minute things, write them down, and you'll get a list of things that you have already accomplished. Okay. Another thing too, is write down all the things that you're grateful for. That always helps put you in the positive. It takes away from the negative. Number three, realize and say to yourself, it's okay to have needs and wants. You know, there's where a lot of guilt comes in. Oh, I don't want to ask anybody for help or anything. Oh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm so um, weak. I have, the, uh, I have to ask for these needs. I need these things. Everybody does. We all, we all want to help each other and we may have needs and wants. I mean, we are human, right? Number four, establish your boundaries. You know, put some boundaries around you. If these are things that you will not put up with in your life, either from your children, your family, your friends, your spouse, your partner, Put up those boundaries and let them know what they are. Say, I really, if they do something, say, I really don't want that anymore. You know, that makes me feel bad about myself. I don't want that in my life anymore. And that goes for your children. You may have to put boundaries because, you know, I, you know, I don't care if you've been born with a silver spoon in your mouth and you have the best parents, whatever. You're going to find things wrong with them. You don't want to keep pounding them down all the time. Seriously. They need to grow up to the way we had to grow up and we have to take responsibility for our own life. Okay. Yeah. We can't keep dumping on the people back there. Now, if there is anything that you need to apologize for, go ahead and do it. If you really feel in your heart, you feel that he wants you to go ahead and say, I make amends, apologize for something, do it and get it out of the way. It's going to help. And lastly, take time to be alone and reflect. Take that time. Sometimes we do need isolation time, time to reflect on who we are. If we're going to be around people all the time and we're not going to be alone for a while, it's kind of hard when there's all this noise going on all the time. I have gained so much perspective being in Tucson by myself most of the time for the whole winter. Yeah, I'm getting ready. I'd like to be around some more people, but I do love my alone time when there's not so much coming at me over stimulation going on. A lot of times we can get inspiration when we're quiet. There's a lot of our inspiration comes from. Remember everyone, no one is perfect. We're all imperfect. We all make mistakes. If at first you don't succeed, well, you're human. If, if the 10th time you don't succeed, you're human. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. Just because we're older doesn't mean we have all the knowledge in the world. We're still learning. What is 75 years? What's even 80 years? That's nothing in the big scheme of things. We all need to go easy on yourself. And I just wanted to let you know about this. I don't know. It just came to my mind. 
that this might help somebody. It might inspire you to finally get over the things you've been carrying around for years and years and years. You know what? Your parents weren't perfect. They had their own crap to go through with their parents. And no parent is perfect. I mean, we've got some really good parents out there for sure. But even they're not perfect because they're trying to grow up too. What parents become parents when they're like in their 20s or 30s? <laughs> if I look back at that, they're like little babies. And they're trying to, trying to um, raise other babies. So we need to be kind to ourselves. Get rid of the guilt. Get rid of the shame. Let's transform our lives and let's start living a new life. Let's get rid of that, okay? Does that make sense? I love you guys. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know what I'll have to talk about, but it'll be something. I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And just know, I love you guys very much. Let me know what you want to hear about. Let me know what you want. I need some questions. I want to know what you want to know. What do you want to know? What do you want me to talk about? Okay? Till tomorrow, everybody. Bye.